So Davis was wrong after all. Well, I never did believe him. And only a few yards from where he thought the tomb was. That's right. Well, you deserve it, Monsieur Carter. I shall come and inspect the tomb tomorrow. This is a most excellent day for our department and for the country. I shall arrange storage facilities at the Cairo Museum. No. It's far too early to involve the museum. Whatever we do, nothing must be rushed. These things are precious. I understand. All care will be taken. I'm putting together a team of experts. I've already contacted the Metropolitan Museum as well as our own British specialists. This is a huge task. Please do not forget there are national interests to be considered. That may be so, but this must be preserved for all posterity. That is far more important than the concerns of any single nation. And as his lordship's field director, I intend to ensure that the correct procedures are followed at all times. I hope that's clear. This is an Egyptian tomb, Monsieur Carter. If I may remind you, please don't touch the walls or any of the objects inside the tomb. Oh, extraordinary, quite extraordinary. I do congratulate you. Thank you. So, th this is what, do you suppose? It would appear to be the first of one or more antechambers. As you can see, there's another small chamber through a hole near the floor here. Are we? And at the far end, the entrance to the remainder of the tomb. But you have not looked through? Of course not. Are you sure this is indeed a tomb and not just a cache? This is remarkable, but for a royal tomb, it does seem quite small. I'm not sure of anything yet. Hmm. Please don't touch. At least not until it's been photographed. I'm sorry. I'm glad to see that the instincts of the scholar have not been overtaken by those of the treasure hunter. I was never a treasure hunter, Mr. Lecoeur. Very well, you may proceed. I shall leave my inspector, Monsieur Ibrahim Mohamed, to attend on my behalf. You'll be so kind as to give your reports to him. And please, let me know when you are ready to break through. Of course. I would also be most grateful if you would arrange for a steel gate with a lock to be placed at the entrance of the tomb. We do not want any tomb robbing, do we? Tutankhamun's tomb was to bring to the world the story of a dark age in the history of ancient Egypt. After a time of revolution, a boy king had come to the throne. In Tutankhamun's name, Egyptians were promised a new beginning. Old monuments were rebuilt, traditional religion restored, and the new king was given a queen, his sister, Anke Sanamun. In keeping with tradition, a site in the Valley of the Kings was selected for the pharaoh's burial, an event that was to come sooner than the young king could have imagined. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, thank you all for coming. Now, as you can see, what we know about the tomb so far is limited. We have no idea what lies behind this wall, and before we make an opening, I propose that each item in this chamber be individually numbered and annotated. 
Harry Burton will then take a photograph in situ. Sorry to drag you away from Italy, Harry. A brief description will then be made either by myself or by Arthur Mace, who has kindly agreed to join us from the Met. I wouldn't miss this one for anything. Then, and only then, will removal begin. This is where we need to be particularly careful, gentlemen, and that is why I have called upon Peggy Callender's engineering skills to help us with the dismantling of the large